Hello, Rupa here from Crafters Corner. I'm going to have a video tutorial today playing with chalk paints this time and I'm going to show you how to create a fur leather texture using chalk paints. The ingredients for today are chalk paints in sheepskin, Turkish tile, nautical and then we have the uh, multi-surface paints in pure black and vintage white and then I have the blending gel from Folk Art, the satin varnish from Home Decor Folk Art and a mister with water, angular brushes in two sizes, one liner brush, the sanding block from Plaid and I have my pot of water with my brushes inside and some scrap tissue paper to create the texture and what we're going to recycle today is the grey goose box I have it here it's a pre-loved one it's been used for quite many years to store some of my inks and you can see how loved it is yeah I didn't want to throw it it's a, it's a really sturdy box and I just thought it needed a makeover and this month being my husband's birthday I just thought I would do a masculine project so happy to share a masculine project with you it's not easy you know how it is to gift men but then I do have something in mind do share me in my creative process and the mess that I create along with you I hope you enjoy this session let's get started and if you're even remotely wondering why my nails are blue because it was a happy accident that my project today is blue and my nails are blue too it's another thing how these are going to remain at the end of this project let's give that also a look at the end how my nails turn out to be so to start off as you can see the box is a little glossy and it's got some dirt and grime over the years so I use the sanding block to scrub that bit of sheen over the box this also helps to create a tooth for the paint to stick and in that process we remove the dust and grime too I have already given it one coat of sanding the plate sanding block is easy to hold on the hand and the grid is just perfect for these kind of paper projects so you can see the amount of dust that's coming through so after a good sand it is always better to give it a, a wipe start with Turkish tile and a bit of sheepskin. I'm going to mix both these colors and then give a coat. So, one coat is more than enough. It really adheres well to cardboard boxes. You've seen many of my projects where I've used uh, chalk paints on cardboard, they're really thick. And one coat is just about enough to cover the entire box. I'm mixing a bit of sheepskin as I want a lighter blue base. So that's here. And adding a little bit of water from the brush. You can see how thick the paints are. Yeah, that's a lovely light blue. A little paint goes long way, especially as I said, this is cardboard. And as you know, for chalk paints, we don't need a primer. Whether whatever surface that you're working on, whether it is wood, whether it is paper, cardboard, metal, a good sanding in case of metal and wood is necessary I also very fast so for impatient souls like me this is really a blessing in disguise no primer no smell easy to use quick drying time what more can you ask and a wide 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 range of colors and blending of two colors is also so easy you can see that you know it mixes so well
So I'm going to cover the entire box. So I'm back with the uh, one coat of paint done and I've used the uh, heat gun to dry it. So you can see how well the box has been coated with just one coat of chalk paint. And yes, there goes my nail color. So for the next step, it's very important that your base color is fully dry before we go on to the next step. So I'm going to take the next color which is a bright blue. It's nautical. As you can see the brown is, the sorry, the blue is really vibrant. Men and blues, there is a connection, right? Men and texture connection. So keeping all that in mind, I take blue, a generous amount of blue here, because that's going to be our top coat. And to that, I add the folk art blending gel. Why I add the blending gel is because I don't want the paint to dry quickly. The blending gel, when it is mixed to any paint, extends the drying time. So it gives you that little extra time to create textures. I'm going to mix an amount of blending gel there. Give it a good mix. Look at that blue. Look at that blue. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Let's see. I do have a vision of what I want to do. I only hope it turns out to be that way. So I'm going to give a, an application on the top. Take your time because we have the uh, blending gel. There's no hurry. It's not going to dry that fast. So I'm covering the entire top surface with the vibrant blue. Yeah. And then I take this scrap tissue paper. I'm going to tear it. Scrunch it. And then place it on top of this giving it some texture and then pull it off look at that texture so again no hurries we have the blending gel so take your time to do it yeah so you can see the lovely texture that is created with the base color which is light and your top coat which is a vibrant blue. Okay, let me show you one more portion. Quick and easy texture that you can do. I'm sure you have a scrap tissue paper lying so again, and then peel it. So let me finish the entire box and get back to you. This is not going to dry soon because we have the blending gel. I'll see you on the other side with the entire box done. So I'm done with all the uh, sides of the box created the uh, leather for leather texture and I'm drying it up I'm going to show you the technique one last time on the base of the box you can see that though I have got back to you after some time the paint is still wet along with the blending gel this is what I had mixed first so I'm doing the same thing for the base too giving the entire box a coat I'm not doing them in batches or one area at a time absolutely no worries like i said the blending gel is there so it's just not going to dry immediately why leave the base of the box that can be leather too right so take your scrap paper it's the same paper that i've been using throughout you don't have to change place it down 
give it a good press and then peel it off one more time good press and peel it off so you can see the texture the fall leather texture which has been created okay so I am so much in love with this texture this is done in a jiffy can you see the lovely texture there and yes my nails too it's got texture I have intentionally kept the center band like this I like the contrast I don't know if I'm going to leave this blue or you never know I could just change my mind so the texture is done on all sides and the base and I don't want to waste the paint that has been left I'm thinking I'll just do some sponging I don't think the texture is going to look too good inside and it's not going to be convenient to do the texture also inside so I'm just going to take some scrap sponge and uh, just give a dab of the color it is difficult to reach inside again if I'm not going to like the look inside I shall cover it up with pattern paper and as I said it's going to be a watch box so I think a pillow is going to come inside to hold the watches so it really doesn't matter Hello brush in okay so we're done with the texture let's move on to the next step I'll just clean the mat and get back to you looks like my camera switched off suddenly as I was doing this technique I just squirted a bit of pure black and then took the angular brush and I have some uh, water misted here in the mat you could use a sponge to do this technique too so what I'm doing here is giving the brush a good wash removing the extra water and then dipping the topmost the highermost point with paint and then stroking it basically to blend it with the water and then I'm blending the edge with that paint so what it does is it blends with the water and gives you a kind of shading from dark to light in just one stroke all right so i'm doing that again i wet my brush remove the excess dip the highest point in paint blend it on the mat and then work on the edges so you could do this with an angular brush if you have or you could do your regular distressing with a sponge where you will load your sponge with paint and then you could go about this same technique I'm loading again and then working on the edges So let me do this to the entire box and I'll show you how it looks after the distressing is done, right? So I've done the bit of blending on all the sides and I just thought I'll show you one more time. I damp the brush, remove excess water, load the tip with paint and then uh, stroke it to blend it with the water I choose the edge which I want to work and then you just need to blend it so it kind of blends and creates that effect in just one stroke you can practice small areas at a time first and then move on to larger areas like this so it's basically on the edges just like our distressing If you think this is difficult, you can use the sponge 
I found this very interesting because it's just one stroke and you're done with your blending. So that's done. So that's the box with the distressing done. You can see the lovely textures getting highlighted now. With the black distressing, the kind of the design kind of pops out. Can you see that? Let's move on to the next step. For the next step, I am using vintage white. We are going to create 4 stitches on the leather. 4 leather, 4 stitches, yes, everything about this is 4. Just going to dilute the paint a bit. Use a liner brush for this. paint shouldn't be too thick or too runny okay so that's loaded and you go about creating your four stitches slightly away from the corner where you've done the distressing the vintage white is a lovely color it's not pure white I don't think creating four stitches should be difficult. So let me do the stitching on the entire box and then come back. I'll see. The four stitching is done. I have uh, done the stitches all around the box. You can see how it looks as of now. I think the white is giving a lot of prominence to the box now. Okay, so at this stage, um, I'm thinking I will bring in some silver highlights. The embellishments probably would be in a blackish silver kind of the metallic silver, oxidized silver kind of look. So I want this band to be silver so I'm going to paint that for which I'm going to use the liquid leaf in silver that's the liquid leaf in silver it's a solvent based metallic color so you need to actually shake the bottle for the pigments to mix rich and thick it is like I said it's solvent based so you need a thinner or turpentine to clean your brushes let me take a thin brush now and cover the center area I want this band to be in silver I told you I'll keep changing so that's going to be silver again This paint is again very thick and adheres to most of the surfaces. The previous project too I did on, on a box. Good for stenciling too. Look at how it flows. And dries very quickly too. Whether it's plastic or metal or cardboard. A nice even coat of silver and what I like about the silver is it's not that bright tacky one let me get back to the rim I know the inside of the box is not looking very good right now
is gold a good color or silver for men another question that's popping in my mind right now i know silver complements blue whereas copper or gold looks better with the warmer tones like reds and oranges so i think the silver painting is done so that's the box as of now at this stage i would like to give the box a coat of varnish one coat of varnish just to protect the work so far and then i would go about with my embellishments so for the varnish i'm going to use the uh, home decor satin finish this is a very thin varnish it's not like thick and not very glossy too perfect for these kind of paper projects so let me take my brush and the nice thing about this varnish is it's water based there's no smell doesn't give a yellow tint and yes you can clean your brushes later with water varnish instantly pops up the color just look at how the blue is shining through and you can see the base the lighter blue also and the texture and the fast stitches of course yeah all showing through one coat of varnish suddenly brightens up the entire project doesn't it so the box is done with one coat of varnish it's nice and protected right now ready to get embellished i'm thinking i'll work with some uh, die cuts on the top to embellish it i want to use the uh, tim holtz the vintage car the jeep let me work on this and then get back to you you may choose to have the box just as it is right now just the leather texture and then probably have some metal uh, charms or something here and maybe uh, a sentiment and then finish the box i want to go one step further with having some more uh, embellishments let me work on that and then get back to you so i'm back with the uh, embellishments done as you can see the, the box has been given two coats of varnish i have used the satin uh, varnish from uh, fokart and for the embellishments i have altered the uh, sizzix die and the center plague is a reminder of my husband's age and i have filled it with uh, modge melt dimensional magic to give it that uh, dimension if you can see it's almost like a label yeah and uh, these are again modge melts which i have uh, painted with black and then with the liquid leaf just dabbed a little bit of dry brushing of the liquid leaf to give uh, a metallic uh, look the oxidized metal kind of look and then inside is the text paper for the windows and this is also a, a die cut which says enjoy the journey intentionally kept the alphabets jumping and these again are those uh, metal brads which i have uh, painted with uh, liquid leaf and then uh, inserted it just to give the box a little more character so you can see the lovely texture shining i think this is masculine enough well then i didn't want to stop so i have a little more of embellishments in the front these are again uh, the gold metal charms which i have painted with the liquid leaf it takes on to metal so easily i could alter it in seconds so these are now silver charms so there it hangs in the front and are you ready for the box to open yes and yeah so that's how the box looks when it's open i made a pillow inside with an old corduroy jeans yes i had to rip it open it was tearing in places and i just thought it was perfect for this project 
so yes did some stitching in the machine and then created a long pillow i think there is space for another two or three watches what say maybe he'll get one along with this box but that's pretty much the collection as of now so i'm glad these watches now have a home a cozy place to stay and this is blue and it's got texture it's got embellishments there's a reminder of his age there what more for stitching i'll have some pictures at the end do have a look i have a small surprise along with this i managed to make a pen holder too if you can see this is made with the uh, brown tapering same technique i've used but then for this i have used bordeaux the chalk paint used is bordeaux to which i added a little bit of brown paint and then uh, applied it and used the same uh, tissue paper technique and then the four stitches with the black distressing and some charms in the front so yeah blue and red not a bad combination i think it looks pretty masculine so that's pretty much the end of this project i hope you enjoyed it i'm looking forward to hearing from you if there's any queries do let me know give me a thumbs up if you like this project and do subscribe i'll have more tutorials coming bye bye